Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Justin Robinson, and we are back with another episode of the Coach Derrick Barrows Show. Um, like always, I have the man himself, Coach Derrick Barrows. Last week, we missed you. How you doing, yeah, Coach? Yeah, I had a, a minor emergency that I needed, needed to take care of, so I apologize for, for the cancellation, but I'm here. I'm here to face the music <laughs> <laughs> and ask any questions that, that you may have. <laughs> <laughs> he said he's ready to face the music. So, um, you guys had a loss to Miles College, 23-13 uh, this past weekend. Um, Miles seemed like a formidable opponent. opponent. Um, how do you think the team fared against the uh, I think against Miles the is more than a formidable opponent. Uh, I think Miles and Tuskegee will probably be battling it out to see who goes to the championship game. Uh, against the uh, against the east side, so I think they're more than a formidable opponent. But I thought, you know, I thought we I thought we started out very slow, like we always do for some reason, and then we'll pick it up the second half. I, I, I um, they told me a statistic on last yesterday that we've been outscored. I don't know, 66 to maybe 10 the first half, and then we've outscored people the second half. So. Um, that's a recipe for disaster, and it's kind of been disastrous, to be honest. Um, so, so you say you don't really have a, you don't really know why you guys fall behind early. If and I knew that, then I wouldn't be sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you consider your team a second half team? Uh, I, I don't know to say we're a second half team in terms of of, of being able to, uh, a second half comeback team. We have not been able to to do that yet, but. For some reason, I, I would rather characterize us as a slow starting team than a second half team. So, did Miles do anything surprising uh, this week? They're a good football team. And they got good athletes, and and um, um, I, I, I told our kids after the game, you know, if you've given everything you have, and uh, don't be ashamed to walk out the door, hold your head up high, and uh, you know. Go out and talk to your parents, talk to your friends. Uh, if you know, if you walk out of this locker room and you, you know you've given everything you got, that's all I can ask for. Uh, the game was, was a very physical game on both sides. So, are you happy with your team's competitiveness? You know what? I'm happy that the guys have not quit. You know, because they could easily have quit. They could easily just say, right. you know what? I'm gonna throw in the towel. Miles could easily beat us by 60 points. You know, but they, those guys really fought. Uh, I was proud of. of uh, Marcus Reynolds, uh, we, he hadn't been getting a lot of playing time. Uh, I was proud that he had some really great plays for us. I, I was proud that the defense played hard. So yeah, to answer your question, I'm, I'm very proud of him. Uh, you, you got your offense improved from last week with a total of 331 yards and two rushing touchdowns. Uh, what was done differently this week offensively to help move the ball? MJ, it wasn't. I don't necessarily think it was anything we called. Uh, MJ is a very athletic quarterback. When things break down up front, he just tuck it in and run. And most of those yards came from Marcus just scrambling. So it wasn't anything that we called specifically. Uh, his, his athletic ability just kind of helped us out during those hard times. And, and we played decent defense. Yeah, you guys gave up 367 yards um, and two touchdowns. Um, oftentimes this season, you guys have been up a, a tough position or where uh, you guys go down in the first half and then in the second half, um, it's like the, the defense holds them and right. the, so the offense can, uh, can um, come back, like mm -hmm. put, put some points on the board. So, uh, like, what's, what's that? Uh, that's okay. I know what you're trying to ask me. We've been we've been inconsistent offensively and right. defensively, and our inconsistency has hurt us the whole season. Um, the games when our offense does well, the defense doesn't do well. The games the defense does well, the, the offense, offense doesn't do well. So we can't seem to get it on the same page, the same game, and it it is it is it has cost us dearly. To be honest. Yeah, this is not the season you or the team has no, hoped for. No, 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 um, no, no, no. But what are some positives that you can take away from last week's game? The positive is I can't play hard. Uh, I'm still, uh, I'm still excited about the fact that they're still out there playing hard. Um, and uh, 
we're still preaching in practice, finish strong. We got two winnable games that we can win to finish this season or finish a bad season off strong. So, you know, when I hit that field, man, I'm, 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 I got a lot of energy. And um, I don't allow my kids to ever see my head down about anything. So, uh, so their head won't ever drop about anything. Right. So, as, as a as a as a head coach, how do you like how do you maintain and keep the players and coaching staff right. um, with a level head throughout? The well, game? well, I, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, when you put coach in front of your name, you shouldn't have, you, there shouldn't be <laughs> any motivation there. Right. You should already uh, have the motivation to you know to keep, to motivate your children and keep you know keep your student athletes ready to go. Uh, me, it's no problem for me. Um, win or lose, I'm going to go out there with the same fiery attitude every day. Uh, try to get our kids to to play hard, to be motivated every day, uh, to find something good about you know being out there for. So uh, it's just a, it's just a passion I have for the game. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep it moving. I'm gonna keep it going regardless. So. Yeah, you guys play Kentucky State this week coming up, and you guys play Central State uh, next week to end the season. Both teams, both teams have struggled this season, yeah. and um, mm -hmm. both te both games are at home. How do you think Lane will play the rest of the season? Well, um, I'm hoping that uh, you know, again, not necessarily this year, but we play better away than we've played at home. Uh, I'm hoping that we can finish these last two games strong finish on a positive note, know the season has not went like I thought it would go, none of us to be honest. But um, we can feel better about finishing strong these last two games. So I'm hoping uh, our kids continue to play hard. If they play like they played against Miles, I think we'll be okay. That, that, that's a big thing. Um, but we'll be right back with the Coach Derrick Barrow Show. Who is that? Lights, camera, action. The Mass Communication Department needs help. All students are welcome to help out with the production of the Coach Burroughs Show every Monday. Any help would be appreciated. Saturday coming up, the, the Dragons of Lane College will play at Kentucky State um, here at Lane College at Lane Field at 2 p.m. Um, how do you feel going into this game? Uh, uh, I don't feel as good as if we were eight and one, but uh, nevertheless, I want to invite you know all the the uh, all of Jackson to come out and still support us, uh, win or lose. I want them to come out and support us. Uh, again, we're the only game in town. And, yeah. uh, you know, every little bit helps. Um, Kentucky State struggled this year. Uh, they are 2-6 overall and 1-3 and in conference play. Uh, can this be the game that, that gets Lane in his first conference win of the season? I, I sure hope so. Um, we Actually, you know, we weren't quite in this situation last year, but, you know, the, the, the war cry last year was still finished strong. I think we had won three games at this point. Uh, four games or something at this point and uh, you know we went down there last year and, and, and played a very impressive game down there and we won so um, hopefully you know the, the, the kids will play like they played last week the defense had well, Kentucky State's uh, defense has given up 21 points or more in every game this season how important is it for your offense to put points on the board early well, um, it, it's, it's important for us to put points on the board, board early and late. Um, 
I, I, I don't pay attention to, to averages too much. Uh, I score one point more than they score. And uh, whether it's 21, 22, 23, 24. So I just want us to score. <laughs> I just want us to score more, more, just one point more than them, and I'm, I'll be perfectly okay with it. <laughs> um, the defense has been put into some tough positions yeah, this year yeah, as they have. tried to hold opponents close in the second half but give it, to give the, the team a chance to win how can that change this week well um, everybody has to be on the same page yeah well everybody has to be on the same page but you know at the same time I do realize uh, that uh, the defense has been on the field a lot, and uh, but we have to we have to have that game where the offense is on point and the defense is on point, and we still has not had that game yet. So hopefully, you know this could be the game. This this is this is what I'm gonna encourage our kids that we still have not played that game where the offense was was moving the ball and scoring points and the defense was holding and making them punt. Uh, we gotta we gotta find it in us to bring that game out. Kentucky State uh, is coming off a close 26-21 loss to Tuskegee last week. Do you think that loss will take a toll on how they play this week? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, I, I don't know how. I, 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 I doubt it. Um, you know, th their coaches are preaching the same thing I'm preaching. You know what? We lost to Kentucky State. Now let's go beat Lane. You know, Lane had more than one game all year. That's probably what they're saying. Uh, so they're probably using every uh, encouraging method they need to use to fire their team up, uh, and I'm doing the same thing. So uh, I, I doubt if K Kentucky State would even remember they lost against uh, Tuskegee last week when they come in here this week. Is there anything you would do differently this week uh, so that the fans would expect to see? Differently? Uh, there's a lot of things I like to do differently. I like to play better defense. And I like for us to score more. Uh, so if we can do those two things, <laughs> so that would help me out a great deal. <laughs> uh, what will be the focus uh, of the team this week in regards to participation? Well, the focus is just, you know, finishing strong. Um, the focus would just be just finishing strong. We, you know, it's been our war cry for the last, you know, four or five games, and we, we hadn't, we hadn't, we weren't able to get it done. But that's not going to stop my war cry. We want to finish strong. Um, I know you like to play on the road, yeah. uh, but how, is this, how exciting is it to be back home and to get ready to end your season at home? Well, you know what? Uh, it's always good to look back and you see Dragon fans. You know what I mean? Uh, right. But it would be nice to have more of them, you know? Uh, <laughs> right. So uh, <laughs> I hope that our record don't discourage people from coming out and, and seeing us. Um, so... Uh, our kids are tried hard. They've, they've tried hard this year. We just had not been the team that uh, that I thought we would. But the kids are still trying hard. So even with our record being one in eight, you know, one in one in seven, whatever whatever it is, I want to encourage Jackson to come out and come out and support us. All right, we'll be right back with the Derek Barrow show after these messages. Why are you doing all this speeding? What time you gotta be there, huh? You ain't James Bond. You ain't some GTA character. You are not on Fast and Furious, okay? This is real life and you are a normal pedestrian. Look at a speed sign, all right? Turn off that radio. Pay attention so you don't end up killing somebody like this fool almost did to me. This message is sponsored by Lane College. The power of potential. And remember, drive carefully. on a journey with us to a world connecting you to your college. With a world that is changing at a rapid pace and is technology driven, the Mass Communication Department provides valuable news and information to the public, providing commentary, entertaining through film, radio, television. You can count on the Mass Communications Dragons to keep you on your toes and in the know of the latest activities going on on campus on all social sites. WLCD, the voice of the Dragons. 
Um, welcome back to the Carlos Derrick Barrow Show. Um, we write again to our audience questions each and every week. Um, we have encouraged you guys to send in audience questions. Um, if you have any more questions for the next two weeks, you can contact us at, land, at broadcast at landcollege.edu and on our social media outlets at Lane College uh, Athletic on Facebook and Lane Athletics on Instagram. Um, so we're going to get into this first question. Uh, Dale asks, uh, what do you look for in a team captain? Uh, we always look for leadership. Um, I think um, that's the most important thing is uh, great leadership uh, on and off the field, by the way. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, key. that's the key. So, uh, but if a guy's a lead, is he, if he's a leader in the classroom, you know, most of the time he, he'll, he'll be a leader on the field. So leadership is the most important thing we look for. Um, Bruce asks, what, what was the hardest adjustment for you moving from college level to the pros? Hardest adjustment is, um, um, the hardest adjustment is probably uh, the lack of funding. Whereas in the pros, um, there's unlimited resources. And we're at a small uh, HBCU school like we are, we always got to watch our dollars. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the biggest and, and in terms of the players, of course, you know, much bigger and athletic players. Uh, <laughs> but but that's the big that's the that's the biggest adjustment you have to make. Yeah, I heard uh, the speed of the game. The speed of the game is always it's a big it's a big adjustment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But once you get the game down mentally, it slows down for you. But you know, you got to be a student of the game for it to slow down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Justin asks, they say the game speeds up when you move from college to pros. Do you experience that when you are playing? When, I'm, when I was playing, uh, yes. Um, you know, I, it, it, the game actually didn't slow down for me until my third year. Uh, my first two years, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> uh, but when I started being more of a student of the game, when I started studying uh, my opponents, when I when, when the veterans start teaching me how to be a professional and how to study our opponents, then the game starts to slow down for me because you kind of know what they're already going to do, you know, when you become a student of the game. So th that sounds weird, but it really does, it really does work like that, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. um, Jay asks, what are some of the challenges of being a football coach that the average fan may not see? They don't. They, they don't see a whole lot. <laughs> yeah, you know, they stay. You know, they, you know, it's it's so much that fans miss because they're fans, of course. Right. But the hardest thing is they don't know we work 14 to 15 hours a day. Uh, they don't know we work seven days a week. Uh, they think we just go out there sometimes on Saturdays and just play. When when it's so much preparation goes into game week. So the biggest thing is they don't know we work 15 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> That's the biggest thing. Um, Byron asks, if you, if you have a player who is struggling academically, what are some of the steps you and your coach staff takes to ensure that they pass their classes? Well, we, we started this tutoring program while we, last year we had tutors travel on the road with us mm -hmm. to every game. And we had English and math tutors on the bus with us. And I found that even though we hired English and math tutors to travel with us, as I watched, nobody used them. Um, so I, I, I kind of felt like, you know, we're spending all this money to, to, uh, to have these tutors travel. And then the kids wasn't even taking advantage of them. So we try to put uh, in place uh, help for the kids but sometimes they don't all the time utilize the help that we that we prepare yeah. for. Um, Dejan asks, what is a typical day in the life of a player on your team? Um, six, five o'clock in the morning, uh, weights. Um, seven o'clock is uh, a special team meeting. Uh, two o'clock is practice and all that classes in between. So athletes' time schedule is pretty regimented. And to be honest, that's probably the reason why they graduate at a higher rate than the rest of the student population, because they're so used to having regimented times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Cameron asks, so what are, what are goals as a coach for your career? What, say that again. What are some goals as a coach for your career? Well, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I think I'm on the downside of my coaching career. Um, so uh, I think the, the only goals I set is to try to develop the best men I can develop here at Lane. Uh, try to develop good student athletes, good men, good fathers, hopefully. Uh, and graduate as many student athletes as possible. So other than that, I, I don't have, you know, I don't have any win-loss. I mean, of course I want to win every week. But right, I, right. I do want it to be more than just X's and O's for our kids. You know, you know I want to win. I, I, I really do. <laughs> but I want to graduate kids, too. I want, to, I want kids to come back to Lane and say, hey, Coach, you really helped me out a whole lot. Uh, Kate Carl, Carlos asks, as a player or a coach, have you ever been ejected from a game and why? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, 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 you know, back in the day, I guess when I, was, when I was a little younger, like yourself, I was a little hot-headed at times. And I got ejected from a, uh, ejected from a game, uh, Miami Dolphins. As a matter of fact, uh, myself and Mark Clayton or Mark Duper, one of us, we got to fighting on the field. And, they injected us, ejected us both, and we both had to pay fifteen thousand dollars fine. So I, I, I need that money right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fifteen thousand dollars back in the day. A lot of money, man. Right now, it's a lot of money. Back in the day. Right, money, right? Yeah. Back in the day. Um, KT asks, how do you let your players uh, interact with officials on the field? I don't. I don't at all. That's a no-no. Um, a lot of times uh, when you talk to officials, uh, they can, during the heat of the game, they can misconstrue that you, you're being disrespectful. That's why I don't, we don't talk to officials at all. I try to talk to officials as much as possible. But during the heat of battle, I never want our players to talk to officials because some officials uh, are a little, a little bit more quick triggered than others to throw the flag. So we don't know who's, who has a quick trigger, so let's don't talk to him. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, Chardonnay asks, what, what would you recommend to a player who wants to play in a different sport in the offseason? Uh, several of our players. I think Aaron Thomas plays basketball. Uh, we, had, we got uh, Jay Tez from the basketball team. So we're a small school. I wouldn't, I, wouldn't tell a, I wouldn't tell a student athlete not to play basketball if he's good enough to make the basketball team. Right. And Baysmore has helped me in, in, in sending some kids our way. We, we, we're too small not to share athletes. Right. You know, we're not, we're not Tennessee where everybody can be individualized. Our football players is our track team. We have, a lot of, we have a lot of young ladies on the volleyball team that play tennis. So we're a small school. So we should, we should be able to share athletes. Um. John asks, what, what was it like playing under Mark Levy? Mark, Mark Levy. Levy. It, it was different. Um, you know, uh, as I said again, when I was younger, I, I was kind of hot-headed. <laughs> and uh, we didn't all the time see eye to eye. But as, our, as I coach my players, and I say all the time, when you get older, you'll understand what I was trying to teach you. And I kind of understand that uh, from his perspective when I was younger also. So. Uh, Logan asks, this summer Andre Reed spoke at dinner with the pros. Mm -hmm. Do you ever, did you ever practice against him and what were those practices like? Andre Reed and I came in as rookies together. So all my whole career I was playing with Andre Reed. And I think Andre and I made each other better every day we went at each other. Uh, he didn't make me good enough to be a Hall of Famer, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I like to think that I made him a Hall of Famer. So. <laughs> Um, so James asks, aside from playing in Buffalo, uh, what was your favorite professional stadium to play in and why? Um, I, was, I was always, more, I, I guess I, I, deep inside I wanted to be a Raider. I wanted <laughs> to play for the Raiders. So um, I always wanted to wear the silver and black. So when we went to, when we went to play, play the Raiders, I just kind of looked around and said, man, this is supposed to be me. <laughs> so, so I enjoyed playing in Los Angeles, the Los Angeles Coliseum. That's the, because I kind of visualized, always visualized myself as being a Raider. 
<laughs> we always wanted to be a Raider. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. Uh, Coach Darryl Rivera was always wanted to be a Raider. <laughs> so, <laughs> I told him about that. But <laughs> uh, well, uh, there you have it um, for another episode of the Coach Derry Burrow Show. I am your host, Justin Robinson, and like always, I have the man himself, Coach Derry Burrows. Um, we'll holler at you guys next week.